are very 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 common in pediatric population. So, firstly, febrile seizures occurs between six to sixty months of age. Months of age. So, the common age of incidence is six to sixty months of age. But now there have been paper published that up to ten years of age, we might have you know uh, GFS plus or the familial familial. Febrile seizures. So up to 10 years, we have seen atypical febrile seizures occurring in patients. But historically, or the textbook data maintains this fact that the febrile seizures occurs between the age of 6 to 60 years. So what is a simple febrile seizure? So simple febrile seizure is that 24 hours of fever, peri febrile period. Now, what does peri febrile period mean? 24 hours before fever occurrence to 24 hours after fever occurrence, we might see seizure. So, if the child has had seizure right now, and if the child has fever after 12 hours, we might call it uh, febrile seizure, simple febrile seizure. So, this has been added into the Nelson's new edition that it is a perifebrile period, 24 hours of fever, like it might be before the 24 hours of fever up to, or up to 24 hours after the fever episode. So, it is 24 hours of the febrile period which is GTCS in nature, it is GTCS in nature, it occurs only once in 24 hours or once a day, it occurs only once a day and it is less than or equal to 15 minutes, not more than 15 minutes and which does not recur within 24 hours. So this is the definition of simple febrile seizure, all four are very important part of febrile seizure, the last three are the more important and the fourth one is added now in the definitions of simple febrile seizure. Complex febrile seizure is more than 15 minutes, partial seizure, partial seizure and which lasts around 30 minutes, uh, sorry, which occurs, recurs within 24 hours. So it recurs within 24 hours, it occurs twice. So if you have two seizures in a 24 hour period, then it is very likely that it is a complex febrile seizure. Now, there is another heading known as fires. What is fires? Febrile illness or infection related refractory. This refractory is in bracket. So refractory epilepsy. So that is fires, which is seen in older children more than five years of age up to the age of 10 years and it is associated with unidentified, unidentified infectious disease. We do not know. Now, uh, the genetics, the genetics, genetics of febrile seizures is SCN1A. And 1B again, as you know, SCM1A is associated with something known as Burgana syndrome that occurs with sudden onset nocturnal death syndrome, also see also called as SUNDS, S-U-N-D-S, which causes sudden onset death in children of Filipino descent. So it is a cardiac condition, but this is SCN1A and 1B and SCN9A. So now what is the difference between these two that if there is SCN1A mutation and if you give a sodium channel blocker, then what happens is that you are worsening the epilepsy. So in activating mutation of SCN1A, you have to avoid sodium channel blocker, while in SCN9A, you have to prefer sodium channel blocker, but these are the genetics of febrile seizures. And there is something known as, again, Jeff's plus. It is due to mutation of GABA. It is autosomal dominant in nature with incomplete penetrance, and it may later call, lead to a febrile GTCS. And there are multiple febrile seizures and it may lead into something later on. Later may cause something known as Dravet syndrome. Or what is Dravet syndrome? Dravet syndrome is again. Dravet syndrome is the most severe form, most severe form of febrile seizure or atypical febrile seizure. It is again autosomal dominant with incomplete penetrance. What happens is initially, initially, initially febrile, it is febrile seizures. Febrile seizures which later become, later becomes a febrile seizures. So initially the history is the child initially had febrile seizures, but then later they came without fever, fever. So they became a febrile and it also has associated myoclonus developmental delay. And for Dravet syndrome, you have to avoid the sodium channel blockers. Carbamazepine is not preferred with Dravet syndrome. You have to give valproate and other drugs. 
again topiramate and all the sodium channel blockers are not preferred in rabbit syndrome so you have to keep that in mind now how do you evaluate the patient of simple febrile seizure for simple simple febrile seizure simple febrile seizure if child is less than 6 months again it might not fall into the definition if less than 6 months you do lumbar puncture because there might be associated meningitis or ill looking children genuinely ill looking uh, children you have to do lumbar puncture but again it might go against the diagnosis of febrile seizure because the child in simple febrile seizure is well looking and the child is usually more than 6 years for a really diagnosed or a confirmed diagnosis of simple febrile seizure you have to reassure the patient and do nothing because it resolves on its own after the age of five years. So reassure the patient and discharge the patient, you have to do nothing else. Do not do lumbar puncture in the first episode of febrile seizure or do not do EEG of the brain with the first episode of, uh, lumbar, of the simple febrile seizure. EEG is done if more than one episode of more than one episode of simple febrile seizure is done. Again, normal EEG does not rule out the presence of epileptic illness in uh, interictal period it might be normal but you have to rule out the other epilepsy causes again blood investigation blood investigation and neuroimaging not advised for simple febrile seizure but if you consider that there might be presence of meningitis or a serious sepsis or some infection then you have to you know keep in mind and investigate for the cause now for the second or third episode of simple febrile seizure you might uh, you know investigate the patient. Now complex febrile seizure has increased complex complex febrile seizure as presence of other seizure variants after the age of 5 years. So what happens is when a patient of complex febrile seizure comes to you, you do not have to you know assume that the patient will always and always go into any other seizure variants after the age of 5 years. And again, if you give anti-epileptic prophylaxis to a patient with complex febrile seizures, it does not decrease the chance of the complex febrile seizure mutating into any other variant after the age of 5 years. So, for complex febrile seizure or simple febrile seizures, no, no uh, anti-epileptic drug is required. So, no anti-epileptic drug prophylaxis is required for simple or complex febrile seizure. And you have to remember that there is no indication of any prophylaxis of febrile seizures. Again, the only thing that you can do is injection or oral PCM you can give so that you know there is decreased chances of fever, which decreases the probability of simple febrile seizure. Again, it does not decrease the occurrence of atypical or uh, other febrile seizures. And when the child is convulsing, you can give intranasal metazolam. or rectal diazepam but you do not have to you know uh, once you have loaded and the child is uh, you know not having any conversion or child has uh, moved on to the post rectal period then you do not have to give any more anti-epileptic because again the recurrence chances are low and even if the recurrence occurs there is no role of prophylaxis in the patient of febrile seizures be it simple or be it complex febrile seizures if it is a purely a febrile seizure then no amount no prophylaxis is advised for that patient I guess that's all for today guys and I hope you like the video and your queries are solved and we'll, I'll see you in the next one.